Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. It's been so long since I've posted, but so much has happened. And I thought it would be a nice little warm up to talk about photos and more specifically printing them. And what I didn't realize is just how much it would change me as a photographer. There are things I notice about my photography that my screen just didn't bring to my attention. Aside from the bit of editing that we all do, like iris and hands and some teeth whitening, they were, there were just things that became so obvious after printing that they were completely unapparent before printing. It's one thing to see your photos on a screen like a phone or something like that, but to see it on real paper with real ink, I can't even begin to tell you how rewarding it is. Rewarding both for yourself and for your pocket if you know how to take advantage of it. Before we talk about the rewards though, Printing is not for the faint of heart. It requires patience and a lot of attention to what you're actually trying to achieve. Before I purchased my printer, I was thinking, okay, I need a printer. I need a good one and I need good paper because I want to eventually sell it. So I went and I got the printer that I thought would accommodate my needs while not breaking the bank. I had been debating over which printer to get for almost two years, rocking back and forth between Canon and Epson, do I want a roller? How many prints do I intend to make? Things like that. Ultimately, I kind of knew what I wanted to get, and that was the Canon ProGraph 1000. It's just an absolute beast of a machine. It prints up to size A2, which is a 17 by 22 inch, or nearly a 42 by 59.6. Normally, this is the maximum size that the average person wants in print, especially here in Scandinavia, since the homes are typically smaller than the size, let's say in the States, for example. So I chose to go with Canon, and I honestly couldn't be happier. Getting to know how to print turned out to be so much more than I thought it would be. Printing is really, really complex. It requires lots of conversions, research, optimization, and so on. I definitely thought I knew what printing was until I had a massive wake-up call and realized I didn't even know the different paper sizes. Taking into consideration that my intention was to sell as many prints as possible, I was completely focused on finding out everything I could to start. If you're like me and you know how much ink and paper cost, <laughs> you do everything you can to minimize those errors. But they are inevitable, so don't be too hard on yourself when you first start. The path is gonna get easier. I'd like to save you some headache though, maybe some pockets from getting burned too fast. First things first, find the printer for your needs. Find out what it is exactly that you intend on doing with the printer. I chose the Canon Pro 1000 because I needed something that was on a professional level so that I can sell them. For yourself, if you're a hobbyist and you want to print only for yourself in high quality, then you might want to consider something like the Canon Pro 300 instead because it's a lot smaller. Secondly, you might be looking into getting some color calibration done for your monitors. Color calibrating your screen is likely to be your first major step into getting better prints. There are, there are several companies that produce devices that help you calibrate your screen to see accurate color. They do cost a decent amount of money, and luckily, I have quite an accurate screen on the MacBook Pro, at least from the results that I can see on the prints. And I have been able to get additional backup through the use of CC profiles. These are downloadable from the merchant's website. These profiles basically work like a translator between your computer, the printer, and the type of paper being used. Some paper can come out with a slightly warmer tone, while others may have certain characteristics which, if left to print without CC profiles, could produce some very artistic results, if you will. Next is to find decent paper to print on. I can highly recommend Hanemüller for really nice paper that won't break the bank. Even Canon's mid-level consumer paper is quite decent to start with. And unless you want to cut a lot, I would suggest getting pre-cut paper for smaller jobs. It's just easier. After you've gotten all the physical needs out of the way, it's time to start printing. So you've chosen the photo, you have edited the photo, you have the paper loaded, and now you're ready to print. I wish I could say that Lightroom or Photoshop can read your mind, but unfortunately you will have to get into that nitty gritty parts of sizing, paper setup, both on the printer and the computer, positioning your photos, orienting them, and choosing between borderless or bordered prints and the fun part, making sure that your aspect ratios are in the correct proportions for the print that you're trying to make. If your photos aren't, if your photos aren't set up properly, you could end up with cut off photos or zoomed in photos, etc. When you take into consideration that it's not free, you tend to respect the craft of printing a little bit more. 
So after all that, out comes your print, happiness starts to ensue, and there it is. All the glory, all the effort that you have put into making this, and it's here in physical form, just wow. With that being said, I just wanted to keep this short, and I thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all again very soon.